What is up, everybody? Welcome back. Collective Beard Reactions. This go around, will be taking a look at the one man Gurkha army, the stand of Sergeant Dipper said, pun. Uh, now, this is something that I took a look at uh, Simple History's Gurkha World War II. Just warriors of like a different breed. That's the only way I can think of. Thing, just just the way they're described and, and what I learned about the way they fight and everything like that. So um, I decided to take and look at more Gurkha stuff. And this took and popped up. And I was like, well, let's take a look at it. So uh, to take and, I mean, just a title, One Man Army one or One Man Gurkha Army. So I'm assuming this this dude did some like very like, heroic stuff um so yeah before we go any further like subscribe and hit notification bell let's go ahead and get into it On the 17th of September 2010, a platoon from the 1st Battalion, the Royal Gurkha Rifles, was stationed at two patrol bases near the village of Rahim Calais in the north of Helmand Province. At some point during the day, the bulk of the platoon departed the bases to secure a key road to the east, with two small detachments remaining behind to garrison the outposts. Tasked with holding the southernmost patrol base were four Gurkhas, among them Sergeant Dibrasad Poon who, in the evening of the 17th, was on sentry duty on the roof of a two-story compound that was at the center of the base. So for four people to take and hold a post, my thinking is maybe it wasn't strategically, like, they must not, I don't, I, I wonder if they seen, you know, if, if they were used to seeing any kind of action over there, if it, you know, wasn't, they didn't think it'd be like high, you know, a high impact place or something like that, because uh, just not a lot of people to hold down uh, anything. Man in his post for several hours, Sergeant Pun soon began to hear some noises materializing from the other side of the main gate, and as he later recalled, I thought at first maybe it was a cow, but my suspicion soon built up, and I saw two Taliban digging to lay down an IED in front of our gate. Immediately, the sergeant called out for the two men to identify themselves, but instead of receiving a verbal response, bullets and RPGs began to hit the patrol base, as a significantly larger Taliban force appeared from out of the darkness. Realising the outpost was under attack, Sergeant Pun grabbed a nearby radio and informed his platoon commander of the unfolding situation, before turning his attention onto the enemy. As soon as I knew they were Taliban, I thought I was going to die. But as soon as I started firing, that feeling went away. I knew I had to do something before they killed me and my three comrades. I thought, before they kill me, I have to kill some of them. That is straight up courage in the face of just... Thinking you're going to die. I mean, that's just... I couldn't imagine Moan being in that situation. I can only imagine... Yeah. I can't even I can't even begin to imagine the thoughts that were going through his head, but that's those types of thoughts right there are what set men apart, set not just men, but courageous just warriors. Just that whole as soon as I started firing, that went away. Like I do something before they killed me and my three comrades. Before they kill me, I'm gonna kill some of them. So regardless of anything, he's like, I'm gonna take them down. I'm gonna take as many of them as I can with me. That's that's a different kind of mindset right there. That's just picking up his SAAT, the Gurkha fired off a rifle grenade at the attacking enemy, prior to detaching a nearby general purpose machine gun from its tripod and returning fire on the advancing Taliban fighters, who are moving forward from three directions. Within minutes, however, he had spent all of his machine gun ammunition, and so resorted to using a mix of grenades to disrupt the attack, 
including six phosphorus, six fragmentation, and four rifle grenades. Once these two had become expended, he picked up his SAAT again and, moving from position to position, he continued to engage the enemy, some of whom managed to break through his line of sight and reach the compound. Looking for a way to get onto the roof, some of the insurgents began scaling up the building's mud walls, with one fighter reaching the top first and proceeding to rush the Gurkha. Training his SAAT onto the enemy fighter, Sergeant Pun shot and killed the insurgent seconds before experiencing a weapon malfunction, just as another Taliban fighter appeared on the roof. Ditching his rifle, the sergeant grabbed the nearby GPMG tripod and held it at the second insurgent, knocking him unconscious. Moments after, Sergeant Pun heard several more of the enemy attempting to climb up to the roof, who he pushed back by dropping a sandbag onto one and forcing the others to retreat when a claymore mine detonated. Eventually, after 17 minutes of heavy fighting, the enemy attack had collapsed and what was left of the Taliban force withdrew back in the direction they had come from. That's... That's absolutely incredible. That's just... I'm, I'm at a loss for words, almost. That's just... A short while later, British reinforcements arrived at the patrol base to strengthen its defences, where they found an exhausted Sergeant Diprasad Pun still on the roof. Sergeant Pun later stated, I thought there might have been around 20 to 30 Taliban fighters involved in the attack, but later locals told me it was probably around 15. I know I'm very lucky to be alive. I didn't think the attack would ever end, and I nearly collapsed when it was over. I did what I was trained to do, there wasn't any choice but to fight. go back to that 250 rounds from GPMG 180 from SA80 17 grenades claymore sandbag and a tripod think there's 30 there's only 15 but to take and see forces come there there's four people total to take and hold the post Four, to, four against 15. And it, looks, it sounds like he basically is... I see the reason why it says one-man army. Training does so much for you. That's a situation, though, unless you have... Like a stronger internal uh, constitution. You literally shit yourself over something like that. You free, you could freeze up and just be listed among the casualties. The fact this man did what he did is absolutely just it's astounding. It's absolutely astounding. Single handedly held the patrol base. Like, that's. Goodness, man. You know, you hear crazy stories of like World War One. Audie Murphy took and what was it? He took like 50 German soldiers by himself. Uh, him and his machine gun, he took 50 German soldiers um, by himself. You hear there's different stories in World War Two of like small 5, 10 people taking 150, 200 people. Uh, you know, the Germans or Italians as uh, prisoners and stuff like that, just overtaking them. Uh, it, it's this right here, though, single handedly holding patrol base against overwhelming odds is just.
there we have it. The one man Gurkha army, the stand of Sergeant, uh, Dipperson, pun, uh, or poon. Just like for real. I, that that's you. There's no words. You can just watching that, hearing his story. Like I couldn't imagine facing something like that. 15 against one. And, basically holding the base by yourself, knowing that if you don't do something, you're going to die. It is, he said his training kicked in. Um, there's, there's a lot of people that even face with, uh, face with stuff, even with their buddies around the stuff like that. Whenever the shit hits the fan, like you've got that internal fight or flight and it's like the body becomes paralyzed and they, they wind up being the, you know, a tragic casualty of the conflict they're involved in or what's happening right there. And the fact that he took and fought all 15 of them off by himself and made them retreat. That's absolutely, it's just astounding, man. There's no two ways about it. That's just absolutely astounding. Um, Y'all be good to each other. Love yourselves. Peace.